Welcome along to the Met Office 10 day trend that takes us to Christmas. If you're dreaming of something white, if you're a snowmantic, then well, you'll be interested in the next few minutes, but certainly for the next few days, you're going to have to add a splash of black to that white outlook because generally grey will be the colour, certainly for the majority of the next week, be it with thick clouds or thick fog, it is going to be pretty drab. Drab, but largely dry. Not much rain in the forecast, certainly after Thursday into the start of next week. There are some signs, however, of a bit of a change as we head towards Christmas. More on that in just a moment. First of all, what's going on? Why so dry and drab? It's um, high pressure building up at the moment from the south, pushing weather fronts way up to the north and then sitting across the country Friday, Saturday, Sunday and beyond. This is a chunky area of high pressure that isn't going anywhere fast. It is going to bring with it quite a lot of cloud and at this time of year also the likelihood of some fog patches which uh, are going to stick around through the day as well. Why is that high being allowed to build in? Well, let's rewind the clock and take a look high up in the atmosphere at the position of the jet stream arching to the north of the UK. And this arching becomes, uh, well, even more dominant as we go through the next few days. We call this an amplified weather pattern and the jet stream becoming just more and more arched way up to the north of the UK, allowing this area of high pressure to sit in this uh, dome or this ridge and uh, continue to dominate, as I say, through into next week. So with high pressure in control, that means the weather will be largely dry. Through high pressure, the air is sinking down. So not much in the way of rain once we've lost that weather front from the far north of Scotland on Thursday. But as I said, at this time of year, where we see any breaks in the cloud at night, that is uh, brings an increasing chance of seeing some thick fog, which will be slow to clear. And we are also looking at temperatures dropping off, starting pretty mild, but um, it is going to turn colder by the start of next week. Now, the details, the day-to-day -day details will really depend on the exact position of the high. Around the high pressure, there will be some breezes. It looks like on Friday with the high sitting somewhere uh, just off the east coast, there'll be a bit of a breeze across southwest England and west Wales and across northern Scotland. It's close to the centre of the high where we're most likely to have fog patches. That's where the winds are lightest. By Monday, a subtle shift in the high further north means a bit more of a breeze perhaps across the south, so less chance of fog here, greater likelihood of fog further north, but also perhaps a greater chance of seeing some breaks in the cloud by day, and so therefore some sunshine. So exactly the exact position of the high will dictate the exact type of weather day by day, whether you have fog, whether you have any sunshine, or whether, as is likely to be the case, it is simply just cloudy. We are also likely to see temperatures dropping off, starting off pretty mild for the time of year, but day by day we will see those temperatures ticking down so that by Monday we're single figures right across the board and if anything below average in many areas, certainly across the south. Even though the winds will be fairly light, it's going to feel pretty cold and especially if it stays dank and foggy, temperatures could even struggle to reach these values. Now I say single figures across the board, but you may have spotted that 11 Celsius there across parts of northern Scotland and that's because the mountains across Scotland could well be the warmest part of the UK through the weekend and into Monday. And that's because high pressure uh, builds something called an inversion. It traps a layer of cloud often and also keeps things cold at the surface. But actually, as you go higher up, temperatures can rise and poking out above the cloud into the sunshine, we could easily see that um, the highlands of Scotland, the Grampians, uh, our weather stations on the top of the mountains could be recording the highest temperatures across the UK. Saturday, Sunday, and probably Monday too. Okay, what's happening as we head into Christmas week? The high pressure is still definitely with us. It's a big one. The uh, jet stream is way up to the north, so it's not really going to shift it and develop any areas of low pressure. However, just pulling out a little bit, you can see perhaps signs of a change. Early next week, yes, the jet stream is still arching way to the north, but it's also showing signs of perhaps splitting and maybe just developing an area of low pressure down to the southwest. And um, there are some signs now that this low could drift up from the southwest and finally oust our area of high pressure. But it is still 
a long way off. And we don't just look at one computer model, of course, when we're looking at the medium to longer range, we run the computer models many, many times. And that's what this is. We call this a, a postage stamp image, showing when we run the computer model 50 times, this is the European model, with slightly different starting criteria. And this is the projection for Christmas Day. Now, you probably can't see much of what's going on there because it is very small, hence why it's called a postage stamp. But some of these solutions are showing the high pressure hanging on. Quite a few of them are showing low pressure becoming the dominant feature as we go in towards Christmas. Let me show you that in a, a slightly more user-friendly manner. We've shown these before in the 10-day trend, the probabilistic pressure trend where red is high pressure. And look at that, red for Christmas, a dominant high pressure throughout next week. However, I'm just hiding off the edge of the screen there, the more recent uh, indications as we head towards the Christmas period. So Thursday the 23rd, Christmas Eve, Christmas Day, it's changing to blue and blue means low pressure is more likely to be the dominant feature. So that's a change in the recent computer model runs or up until uh, the last couple of days, it's been high pressure likely to dominate until the new year. But the more recent computer model runs are just hinting there that we could see a change to lower pressure and that would mean wetter weather as well. Another way of looking at it here is with the uh, probabilistic regime projections and this is goes uh, from zero to 100. So the percentage of those uh, regimes in control. The red and orange regimes, they're high pressure, blue is low pressure. And again, just the dates going along the bottom here, hints as we head towards Christmas of an increasing chance that low pressure will perhaps start to influence things. Still only 30, 40%, so it's by far from nailed on. But uh, as opposed to all of next week dominated by high pressure, just as we get towards the Christmas period, we could start to see a change. Now, of course, low pressure likely to bring wetter weather, but that doesn't necessarily mean snow. It's also, if it comes up from the southwest, likely to bring milder conditions. But the run up to Christmas, the main headlines for next week, cold and dry will dominate. If you are traveling, then fog is likely to be the biggest hazard and make sure you check day by day for the details and the position of that high. But there are some signs I have things changing a little bit as you head towards Christmas. But as I said, wetter doesn't necessarily mean snowy. It could just turn wet as in rainy. So don't write off Christmas yet, whatever you're hoping for, and make sure you stay up to date with the latest from the Met Office. We'll have day-to-day -day details, of course, throughout next week. And the best way for you to stay up to date, follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channels, and then you'll never miss a forecast.